So uh, what I want to discuss today is uh, uh, this question that, uh, uh, let's go back for a second to classical mechanics. Uh, and just write, uh, if you have a bunch of point particles, right, uh, they are described by Newton's law, something like this. Uh, that the acceleration, mass times acceleration, is equal minus the gradient, right, of, of some potential that it may depend on the position of, uh, of, of uh, the, the, say, a generic potential. I, I don't really. That depends on the relative distances of, of this uh, uh, of this bunch of particles. Um, and uh, if you remember, uh, these equations are invariant in form under uh, uh, um, uh, translation, rotation, and uh, transfer. So they are invariant under translation, right? So if you translate your, uh, uh, your axis, so from y to y prime, say, and then the z comes out from this way. Uh, okay, these two are two equivalent uh, sets of Cartesian axes. So if you do this transformation, uh, you know that uh, um, these equations are invariant in form. That is, you can put the prime everywhere, right? Uh, and uh, it's still okay. They maintain the same form, okay? And in fact, it's even more than that because you, you can also rotate your axis, right? from uh, y to y prime and from x to x prime. So uh, you do a generic rotation. Now I, I don't want to, I mean, you, you do a generic rotation and clearly the, 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 the Newton's uh, 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 equation remains the same in form. I mean, it has exactly the same form in the prime coordinates than in the unprime coordinates. Okay, that's sort of, uh, in fact, you remember that this transformation, they are linked with the conservation uh, properties of your system, right, in general, that uh, if you rotate, you, uh, if there is rotational invariance, then you can deduce uh, and so on. But the most important transformation is that uh, uh, if you go from a, a set, a frame, right, that You have uh, uh, your, uh, uh, so you do a transformation from one set, say, uh, y and to y prime. And now this, this, these two set, let, let's, let's assume that they're, they, they, it moves uh, uh, in the, uh, by keeping the, the x direction uh, unchanged. By a transformation, you go to a new system that is moving with constant speed v with respect to your original set of coordinates, right? That means x prime is equal what, x minus uh, vt, and then uh, because I, I, I put, I mean, it could be, uh, v could be a vector pointing in any direction, but let's assume that points in this direction. Therefore, uh, therefore uh, you see that y remains y, z remains z, and in particular, t remains t, okay? This, uh, this kind of uh, boost, uh, I mean, this transformation from moving, uh, is, uh, is called, uh, 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 I mean, the invariance of Newton's law under this set of, is, is called Galilean, Gali, Galile, uh, how, how do you write it? Galilean uh, invariance. I mean, that uh, they are all uh, uh, inertial, you see, system frame, Frames of reference moving with constant speed, they are inertial, right? You remember from uh, uh, before Christmas. And uh, the physics is the same. W what does it mean, the physics is the same? It means that Newton's, uh, you can write a Newton equation uh, and it remains exactly in the same form. You just put primes there and there and it's actually the same. You can check that this is so for this transformation. You see, uh, you, you could check for translation. I mean, clearly the, the translation invariance is due to the fact that this potential only depends on the uh, relative distances, right? I mean, and uh, rotation is the same. And uh, in particular, this is true because you see that uh, uh, the velocity remains the same under this transformation. 
the gradient remains the same, right? It's not affected. And this relative distance remains the same. Because if you have a relative distance like this, then if you move with respect, you measure that it remains just the same. Therefore, the equation, indeed, that they remain the same if you put the prime, OK? And you can check, in fact, it, it could be just a, a, an exercise that you can check that if you rotate your, you do a rotation of your coordinates, again, this remains the same. But this, in a way, the fact that it remains the same is due to the fact that you can write this as vectors, and so it's invariant on the rotation and this kind of translation. Okay. Now, this is a very profound uh, statement. I mean, I hope you appreciate it last year when we first uh, uh, discussed it, and, uh, uh, and uh, because uh, it's not so, so obvious, right? If you ask the, the first guy, it, it will not be so obvious, right? Uh, and it comes from the fact that the, 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 the force depends only on the acceleration, right? So because it depends on acceleration, then if you're moving with constant speed with respect to this room, then the laws of physics are going to be uh, uh, the same, right? And we also study examples in which this was not true, that was uh, non-inertial uh, frames, right? Uh, if you are rotating or you are accelerating, then you will see that the, uh, the laws is changed. You have extra terms, right? Extra terms that are not here. Uh, like uh, Coriolis uh, force and, and so on and so forth. Now, this was very clear to uh, uh, Galileo, and in fact, that was uh, his main contribution to physics. And uh, 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 and he essentially observed right that if you if you are on if you are on a beach and uh, you look uh, uh, at people on on a big ship ship moving. Uh, uh, across, right, uh, and they toss a ball or they exchange something, they run, everything is exactly as if they were on the beach, right, even though they f their, their, their frame of reference is the one uh, moving with the big uh, ship, right. Now we talk about spaceship, but uh, the idea is exactly the same. Now, so why I'm discussing uh, uh, this? Because this is a sort of, of uh, the principle of relativity uh, for Galilean physics, right? It's, uh, the principle of relativity is, says uh, that uh, the physics is the same uh, no matter what frame of references you are picking as long as they move with constant speed with respect to it. So they are not uh, accelerating. In fact, when, when the people talk about relativity, it's just the opposite, right? Because one thing of relativity that something depends on uh, right, but it's exactly the, the, it, it's the principle of invariance rather than relativity because we understand it's just telling you that uh, for all those frames of reference moving with constant speed, this, the physics is the same, it's invariant. Okay, so this term relativity is really not a very good term for this stuff. Anyway, now, however, we know more than this, right, because we study electromagnetism and a natural question. A natural question is now, for instance, we have uh, Maxwell equations, or even uh, 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 simpler, we have the, the wave equation, the, the wave equation that we study, right? That is uh, this uh, oh, this uh, uh, gradient of uh, this gradient squ square, right? Uh, uh, minus one over c square uh, d square dt square of uh, or some function depending on uh, uh, x and t equal to zero, right? Here the, it could be the electric field, the potential. We, we, we discover that in empty space, Maxwell equations give rise, gi gives, give, uh, they, they give rise to, to uh, the wave equation, okay? And uh, so is this equation invariant under uh, this uh, Galilean uh, transformations? So that's a natural question that uh, one may, may ask. And the fact is that uh, they are not. Because uh, uh, you see, it, it comes from the fact. So we have this, uh, this uh, essentially, the, 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 the critical one is this, uh, uh, this with the velocity, right? That you have x prime equal to x minus vt. And you see that. Uh, uh, it has to do with the, uh, say, the, 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 the x derivative of, of psi, say, this is OK, right? Uh, uh, it's not going to, to, and the same for y and z, 
OK? But you see that the time derivative, it, 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 it may lead to trouble because the time derivative of this, right, uh, you see that uh, uh, it's like minus v d psi dx prime plus d psi dt prime, right? So th this is not equal to this. It has an extra term because of this dependence in the transformation, right? So you go from the prime quantity to the unprime quantity, not in the simple form that would lead to an invariance, okay, but to this uh, sort of mixed term. And you see that when, when you go to the second derivative, you have to apply this twice, right? So you see that the second derivative of psi with respect to the time, that is this term here, get, uh, uh, well, it gets an extra term. I mean, this would be the invariant term, right? But uh, because of this uh, mixed term, it gets uh, one term that comes from the mixed derivative, right, when you take the time derivative of this. And then it gets the, the extra uh, uh, d2 psi dt prime square, right? So even though this is invariant, this is not. So if you do a, a, a so if you transform your wave equation from a, a, a system at rest to one that is moving with respect to that with velocity v, uh, you get extra terms. So this one, it's okay, it's, it's, uh, it's the same. But then you get extra terms coming from those. So you get the 2c square, the, the, the one with the v, right? So v now is a vector, this I did in one dimension. So it's a v vector, the gradient of the ddt. <coughs> and then you get the, the, the v dot delta square, right? Uh, acting on psi. So you see, the equation is not invariant in form. Because uh, even if you, when you put the prime right here, you get all these extra terms. But this is OK, I mean, because that is correct for a wave equation. Because you know that the wave equation describe, describes the, the motion of waves in some medium, right? And uh, uh, if you are moving in this medium, so like myself, now I'm talking and I'm moving. And the medium is the air of this room. And uh, you see, what happened is that uh, uh, the property of the, of the sound waves depends on the medium, not on the fact that I'm moving, OK? So they are not invariant, I mean. The fact that I'm moving now is changing the situation. And therefore, is that what you expect is, in fact, that the wave equation is not invariant. Is that clear? I mean, because the velocity of sound does not depend on the fact that I'm moving. It depends on the property of the medium, right? Therefore, it's not the same, OK? They, they, they are all the same, even if I'm moving. Why you would expect that if you were moving, they would sum up, right? That the velocity of sound will become hi hi higher if I move toward you and slower if I move away. And even not symmetric the situation, because on the contrary, if you are moving, that uh, the frequency of the, the wave changes, because that's the Doppler effect that you know now, if you, uh, right? Okay. So you see that the wave equation, by, 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 its by its nature, is not invariant on the, the Galilean transformation. So here we have a, a problem, right? Because uh, we have half of, of what we learn, that is the, all this Lagrangian classical mechanics stuff, is based on this invariance. And now half of what we learn, that is the Maxwell equations and the wave equations that follow from that, uh, that satisfy another set of uh, invariances. OK? So what are you supposed to do? They, they don't work together, right? By the way, you, uh, so, uh, you can see, think, what, what, what about Schrodinger equation? Is that invariance under Galilean transformations or not? Well, actually, it's more subtle than that because uh, there you have more freedom because you can multiply the wave function by some phase, right? And it's not going to change much. So you may think about that, uh, take it as a homework, but we are not going to 
that uh, what the, the Schrodinger equation actually it is invariant and uh, uh, and uh, the this uh, uh, but of course you get the psi that gets shifted by some phase. Okay, but that's okay because it's a phase, so you know. Uh, but uh, so that has to do the, the the it's not the wave equation strictly speaking the 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 the, the Schrodinger equation because it has the first derivative here, right? In fact, one of the problems of the Schrodinger equation that is not invariant on the, the transformation the transformations that we are going to, to discover that the wave equation is, right? So strictly speaking, I mean, the, uh, the Schrodinger equation is not invariant on the Lorentz transformation, of course. But it is invariant under the Galilean transformation, so it's fine. The Schrodinger equation is OK. The wave equation is not. And uh, I guess. Uh, 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 people knew about that, uh, and uh, they study uh, Lawrence and others. They study, so they ask themselves, what is the set of transformations uh, that leave this equation invariant? Okay, and probably you already know the answer, but uh, it's easy to derive what are the properties because you see, for this equation to be invariant, that means that the uh, the, the wave, say a spherical wave, the uh, a front wave, right, satisfy uh, the fact that s square plus y square plus z square, right, minus c square t square is equal to 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 is the same in all uh, uh, frame of references, so it's constant. So that means. Right. This is the. The, 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 the wave front is invariant under this transformation. If this is so, then the, 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 the wave equations are invariant. So what is the transformation that leaves uh, this uh, invariant? That's easy to, to compute, but first uh, it's useful to call, you see, it, 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 the, front wave, the front wave of a wave, it has this character because that moves with velocity c, it has this characteristic signature, right? It has the special parts minus the, temp the, the time parts. So except for this C, the T behaves like a, a, a coordinates, right? And so you may as well uh, call this, uh, this uh, C times T the, your uh, 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 first coordinate so that uh, 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 then this looks like uh, simply what? Just uh, if you call x not this, then uh, x1, x2, and x3, right? Your f four coordinates, okay? Then uh, this uh, becomes very simply that the, the length of this vector, but it's a, it's a peculiar vector because of this minus here, is constant, right? It's, that means that x mu, this is x mu, the components of x mu. So x mu square, right, where you sum mu from 0 to 3, where 0 is the time component of this vector, uh, remains the same, right? So that's the requirements that uh, you impose. And then, uh, so what is, this is a, a linear transformation of coordinates, right? So x uh, prime mu is uh, some uh, sum over, say, nu, a mu. So these are co a matrix of coefficients transforming this vector components, right? That's the generic linear transformation of a vector of, with components x naught, 1, 2, and 3, right? And you see that uh, uh, in order to have this to be true, to preserve this or this better, this to, this to to be true, uh, well, of course, this is a transformation in which uh, uh, it, it's an orthogonal transformation. So you can add the, the property that a mu nu, right? So you ri 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 rise a, a index and then you multiply, say, by another one. Nu lambda must be what? The Kronecker symbol, right? That's the definition of an orthogonal transformation, okay? So these are 
linear orthogonal transformation sending you from, this, uh, uh, from these coordinates to these new coordinates, and you want this uh, a mu nu, okay, these are the transformation, to, to be such that uh, this, the, the, the lengths of this vector uh, remain the same, it's invariant, because the lengths of the vector, uh, of, of the position, defined with this uh, odd sign here, uh, uh, if that remains invariant, then you have the invariance of the front uh, way, okay? And you see that, uh, uh, let, let's do it for, uh, so this is in general, but let's do it for a particular direction. So let's look at, at the transformation in the x1 uh, direction, okay, beside time. So that matrix A, you see, if I'm looking that just at the 0, 1 component, uh, uh, is it, made like this, right? 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, and then the rest is 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, obviously. 0, 0, 0. Is that enough zeros? Yeah. No, some. Uh, zero, zero, right? Now, you see that if you impose that the lengths uh, to satisfy this, uh, you get that, uh, what, A0, 0, zero squared minus A0, 1 squared must be equal to 1, minus I, 1, 0 squared plus 1, 1, 1 squared must be equal to 1, and then the product like A0, 0, zero A0, 0 1 plus 1, 0, 1, 1 must be equal to 0, okay? This because of the... Now, <coughs> so these are conditions on, uh, on the coefficient. So I'm looking at the same case I was looking before, just uh, uh, something moving in the x direction, okay? And then nothing is, is going on in the y and z direction. This uh, is the, this condition on the uh, orthogonality of this coefficient. Now I, I'm doing the, uh, the transformation. So you see that uh, x, so le let's start from uh, uh, x uh, prime uh, 1 equal to 0, right? So you see that the transformation, I'm doing this Galilean, tra uh, this, uh, the, the, the transformation to, to the motion. So x1 must be equal to vt, right? Or if you reintroduce the, uh, the x, x1, this is t, so this is uh, uh, v over c x naught, right? This v over c keeps on popping out, so I, I give it a name, beta, and so x naught. So here I'm just rewriting t in terms of x naught. So you see x1 must be beta x naught, right? So what is x1 prime? x1 prime, uh, I read it off from here, x1 prime is a11 x1 plus uh, a10 uh, x0. So then by using this uh, uh, thing here, you see this is x0 a10 plus beta a11. But you see, I started out with x prime in equal to 0, so that means this must be equal to 0, okay? So a1 naught must be equal minus beta a11. Uh, On the other hand, also this is true, that uh, you see, minus a1 naught square plus uh, 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 a11 square, so from this and that, uh, you see that uh, you get that uh, A11, so I use this to rewrite A10 in terms of one, uh, A11, so then I, I pull them out, so I see that A11 square, 1 minus beta square, must be equal to 1. So from here, I deduce the value of A11. A11 must be 1 over 1 minus beta square. 
que square root. But then, if I know a11, I know a10 because of this. It's just minus beta 1 minus uh, beta square. OK? And from here, I get the other. So you see, by imposing this condition, I deduce the value of the coefficient a of this particular transformation that leaves the front the, the, the shape of the wave unchanged, right? Because I can write this matrix in this case to be equal to uh, 1 over square root of 1 minus beta square minus beta 1 minus beta square, then 0, 0, and then a1, 0 is just minus beta 1 minus beta square, 1 over 1 minus beta square. Then I have 1, 1, and then zeros. In fact, this factor here gets a name gamma usually in the textbooks because so you have gamma and beta. Beta is the ratio of the velocity of the transformation with respect to the velocity of light. And gamma is this, uh, this combination of these factors. Okay. So now you see you can write individual components because uh, now this is the generic transformation that leaves this uh, expression invariant. And I can write, for instance, uh, what is x prime, x prime meaning uh, x1, in terms of this transformation, because you read it off from the transformation matrix. It's just this factor gamma that is here uh, everywhere, right? And then you see it's x minus vt. And what is t prime? You see, t prime is not t. It cannot be t because uh, of the form of this transformation. You see, t prime 2 gets transformed, and it's this factor gamma t plus v c square x. For this particular choice, then uh, you have that uh, y prime is equal to y, z prime is equal to z, because uh, you are transforming only in that direction. OK? This, in general, is called a boost because it is a boost. It's a boost to go to a new frame of reference uh, that is moving ve with velocity v or beta in units of c. And you see the particular fact is that this, this looks like the Galilean transformation, except for this uh, boost factor gamma that somehow popped in because of this requirement or leaving this uh, wave unchanged. But uh, OK, that you could live with that even though, of course, it's a very important factor because you see that uh, as your speed comes close to the speed of light, this beta comes close to 1, and you hit the singularity. But this is more, more, more uh, sort of uh, worrisome because uh, t that you were used to, t prime equal to t, after all, t is t, uh, is not any longer the same. You get uh, not only the boost factor gamma, but you get a shift in t coming from the posi position in space. So that is already telling you that uh, the transformation leaving the, the wave and change are going to change your idea of simultaneity. Because before, t prime was equal to t. So now here was exactly the same now for the observer moving with, with some velocity v with respect to me. We all agree w with our clocks. But now this is not longer true. Our clocks are moving at different time, with different speeds, so we have to worry how to synchronize events in this, uh, in this, uh, uh, in this, uh, in these things, right? Huh? No, I think it should be a plus. Huh? Uh, no. I think I have plus. Oh, do you see minus? Let's see. Boost. Uh, yes, yes. No, no, you're right. T gamma T minus. OK. Thank you.
Now you can convince yourself that these transformations are correct uh, for the case of the of the of the wave. In fact, in this for this very simple case in which uh, we are boosting in the x direction, that is the velocity is all in that direction. These are, are are left unchanged. So let's assume that they are at the origin and they remain at the origin. So this part uh, is just zero. Then you see that the wave condition is simply that if, if x is equal to ct and x prime is equal to ct prime, right? So you can apply your transformation and verify that, in fact, uh, uh, this is the case, that if you boost, uh, they remain invariant. This is not the case with the Galilean transformation. If you have t fixed and x prime changing, obviously, this cannot be satisfied. But we already knew that. Right? Now, these transformations, uh, of course, uh, you have the corresponding one. So this is a boost in one direction. But in general, the, vec the, the, the v is a vector, so with components in, uh, along x, y, and z. So you have components also in the other uh, elements. Okay? Um, but uh, it's easier to just think of a single boost. And of course, this is a Lorentz. transformation, that they, they, they are the, the transformation that leaving, as, as I show here, uh, are the general transformation uh, leaving the, the front uh, wave, this, the shape of the wave uh, unchanged as you change from a frame moving with respect to the other with velocity v. Um, of course, there are several. Uh, you already knew that, uh, I, 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 I take it. Uh, you, you knew that these are the Lorentz transformations. And uh, the, probably it was stressed to you that uh, because of this fact of mixing x and t uh, in the transformation, not leaving t separately, they introduced this idea of space-time that we are going to, that is, you cannot talk any longer about a point in space. You have to talk about a point in space-time. Because you see, every time, uh, what is uh, in, in a position in space at a given time uh, for one observer is, a, is, is that thing in, in a different position in space and time for another observer. right? So this is very, very different of what we had before. because. If, 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 if I'm moving, say you are on the usual train, right? you move by in, in the Newtonian or Galilean system, uh, you, you agree on the time, as I said. right? You say it's 3 o'clock, and you are here. If, I'm, uh, if you are moving, you are there. Okay? That uh, was the idea. But now that's no longer true. I mean, you also have to agree on the time. Before we discuss that a little more, uh, let me point out that this Lorentz uh, transformation, they form a group just uh, mathematically speaking. And uh, so I, I'm not sure I want to uh, discuss that much. Uh, but uh, uh, so they, they form a group. Uh, usually, maybe L is, uh, is called, or, or some other. Uh, and uh, it's a group, uh, as I said, that uh, leaves this distance uh, uh, unchanged, right? Uh, and you see that you can write this, uh, this distance by introducing what, uh, so let me erase this. So I don't know how much you want to know about this, uh, the group structure of the Lorentz group. But uh, um, uh, you see, this is a distance, right? So distance is, so it's uh, like, uh, uh, as I said, uh, uh, so x1 plus x2 square plus x3 square minus c square t square. Right? This is I call x naught. Usually, a distance is defined by a metric tensor right? in space. Uh, this is a flat space time. Uh, uh, and because you see, you can write this as uh, you, take the, the, you take the transpose of this vector. You multiply by this uh, ma matrix, let's call it g, and x, and you get uh, this, right? If g, you see, is, it has, uh, so the, the zero, say, if you call this the zero component, then you see the zero component gets a minus, and the others are just one, 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 and here are zero. Is this clear, or? No, it's completely, so I, I take, so the position is, is made of x naught, x one, 
x2 and x3, right? This is time, x, y, and z. So I take the transpose, so this is x0, x1, x2, and x3. Then I have a matrix, and then I multiply x1, x1, x0, x1, x2, and x3, right? This is what you do when you multiply two vectors. Usually, you didn't write this part here, right, because it was trivial. Be before, it was just 1, 1, 1, right? Forget about the, the not. In space, we didn't write this part here because it was just the identity matrix, so who care, right? So you just multiply this by this, and you got the length of this vector. Now, however, it's almost like this, but uh, you have to be careful because when you multiply x naught, you get the minus. So you have to remember that you have a minus. So it's a good idea to write this product, put in a, the, the matrix here. Okay, this matrix is called the metric. It tells you the signature of space-time. Is that any better or now? Or do you understand it now? Yeah. So space-time is characterized by this. Uh, all spaces are characterized by this uh, metric, metric, uh, matrix, a tensor. But in particular, this is a, a flat space-time. Don't worry about the term, but uh, because you see it's diagonal. But it has this important property of having a minus here. That's the reason why time is not, I mean, it's there in space-time, but it's not like space, right? Sp time is a very particular coordinate, OK? So this thing that I did, uh, uh, so uh, one piece at the time, that is the invariance of this under the transformation, and then we discover that, that your coordinates must transform like uh, uh, Lorentz uh, said, uh, is imposed on the, uh, uh, on, the, on, the, on the invariance here, right? OK. And uh, you see that uh, the, the, the Lorentz group, that is the set of all the transformation, uh, if you, if you mm, uh, uh, so the, uh, a generic transformation, you could call it lambda, right? And then you see that uh, the invariance of this becomes the invariance of, uh, in this form here, the metric tensor is invariant, right? This is the property. And you see that uh, this generic transformation, uh, in fact, has a property that the determinant of this Lorentz transformation must be equal to 1. Okay, these are called the proper Lorentz transformation. You also have the non-proper Lorentz transformations, you understand, but the proper Lorentz transformations are the ones that uh, 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 can be uh, reduced to the identity, right? The non-proper, the one with the minus one here, are those that include the inversion. Here you don't have the inversion, right? The x going to minus x. There are two sort of... Uh, uh, so subgroups. So the one that includes the identities, that is the one we want to stick to, is called, so if this was the Lorentz group, this was the proper Lorentz group, maybe L, L plus. And uh, if you also require that the zero, zero component, remember that matrix I wrote there, is greater than zero, okay, uh, these are the orthochronological Lorentz transformations, sometimes indicated in this form. And how many are the parameters of this Lorentz uh, group uh, elements? You see, it's a four by four matrix, right? The transformation, remember the one I wrote here, A00, A11. So in principle, there are 16, right? But uh, uh, you have uh, many conditions, you see, that they have to satisfy because they are orthogonal uh, and orthochronological. Uh, uh, and so you get. Uh, 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 10 conditions, okay, if you count. So 16 minus 10, it's 6. So you get 6 parameters characterizing this transformation. So this, uh, this group is made of... Uh, and what are these 6 parameters? Well, 3, you must tell me immediately, because these are the rotations, right? So what are these 3 parameters? the Euler's Langos. You see, they came back. And the other three are the boosts. So the Lorentz transformations are made of rotations, okay, 
and then uh, the boosts that are these transformations where, where you boost from one frame moving at a certain speed to another one moving to another speed. And you have three of them because here I just wrote one that was the boost in one direction, but you can boost in any directions you want, so you have three boosts. So three Euler angles and three boosts are the six parameters of the Lorentz group. Where are the translations? You may wonder. Well, they are not here because here I'm assuming you see that uh, I keep the the, the 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 I'm not including the the, the the translations. Those are members of a larger group that is called the Poincaré groups, where you also put the the the. This condition or the, no, they are orthogonal transformation, like rotations with the terminant equal to one, right? Uh -huh. This is, is like the, the group of rotation O3. Then you impose this condition and you get SU. No, uh, is that the question? No. Ah, the, the uh, what are the ten conditions? Mm -hmm. Ah, that's okay. I leave it as a, yeah, I wrote them here and I leave it as an exercise. But you understand, some are these orthogonality conditions, then these conditions, and, and this. So, I mean, it's no big deal. <coughs> So this is about the Lorentz uh, transformations. And uh, uh, you see that we are forced, it's forced upon us this concept of, uh, of space-time, right? So we have to say something about space-time, I guess. Um, usually this idea of space-time is not I mean, everybody knows about space-time, but then when you start discussing, you realize that uh, the weirdest ideas are, for instance, what is your idea of a time machine? Well, I know that you cannot <laughs> build it, but uh, uh, you know there, there are many books, uh, the, the very famous Wells book, uh, The Time Machines. Uh, uh, the idea generally is that you have a machine that uh, you turn it on and it transfers you somewhere else in time, right? And you understand that this is a completely wrong idea, right? Because let's say that we have this machine here now, right? You want to go back, I don't know, uh, to 200 years ago, right? So, and the machine does that exactly. It just moves you from time now to time now minus 200. You see, that's a very dangerous machine, that's even if you build it, because you, you, you push the button and you die, right? You understand why? Why? You, no, 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 that's not, a, I don't, it's more simple. Let's assume that you have <laughs> bypass all this paradox that you kill your mothers and all stuff. <laughs> that's not, that's a minor point. It, you get killed because 200 years from now, the earth is not here. It's very far away. So you, you, you come up in empty space and you die. That's the reason why nobody came back from the past, if that is a time machine. You see, the time machine is really a space-time machine. If you ever want to build one, you should build a space-time machine, something that moves in time and space, you see, because they are always related. Like, if you want to go back here in Trieste 200 years ago, you have to move 200 years in time, but at the same time, you have to move in space where the Earth and our galaxy was 200 years ago. And it's very far away because, as we said, the Earth moves move 50 kilometers per second, and then the galaxy is moving toward Vega with the, even faster. So you see. So they always come together. So it, they must be discussed together. But to discuss them together, you need uh, to, uh, to define. Uh, so let's say this, uh, this blackboard is space time, right? And we are used that the distance, right, on, on this blackboard, right, x and y, distance is uh, defined by this uh, quantity, right? That's the usual, the other thing. 
But you see, the problem with space-time, as we said, is that it looks like, almost like this blackboard, except for the sign minus, right? So the distance in space-time is not this. If, if this blackboard it has x here and time there, the distance there is this. It has this sign. And this is very important, because if you start measuring distances in this, so let's assume this blackboard has a metric, as they said, with this minus here. This is called the Minkowski metric, by, by the way. OK, so let's assume this blackboard is the Minkowski, has a Minkowski metric uh, in one spa spatial dimension and time, of course. Then you want to, di di so here you have CT, or X0, as we introduce it, and here you have X. And uh, you, you have all these lines. You know, this is the measure of this distance. And then you have points, say A and B, and, and so no, A, uh, I call it B here, B and C, OK? And uh, also, you also have, so I keep on, well, that's really bad, but. I also want to have, say, A prime. Then I go up here to C prime, and I have B prime here. OK? Something, something like that. Now, if you start measuring, you see uh, it's a bit funny because uh, uh, so one, two, three, four. Well, I wanted five. So, so AB, the distance AB, you see is five, five squares, right? And uh, AC. OK, so B, B, C is 3. OK. Now, how, how long is A, C? Well, you use uh, the Pyth Pythagoras uh, theorem, but uh, you must be careful because you have this minus sign right in this direction. So A, C is 5 square, right? But when you go this direction, it's not plus, it's minus. So it's minus 3 squared. So AC is equal to 4. So this is 4, this is 5, and this is 3. So you see it's a space that has some weird property because AC is less than AB. And here is even, it's even stranger because, let me put it like this, uh, say A prime B prime let, let, let's say this is three squares. It's a little less, but uh, as before, say it's about three. And and uh, and also this should be three, right? Because it's I, I draw it symmetrically, so also b prime and c prime is equal to three. But now, how, how long is a c? You see, is yeah. No, I'm sorry. I, I made it. I made it wrong. <laughs> so this is, I, I computed this three, right? So let me draw it correctly. A B. I draw it. Uh, so so I, I I want three square here, or, or let's say two. Let's say two. You see, how long is A B prime? Is two, right? Two. And then 2 here, but it's 2 minus 2. OK, so I made it wrong. So it's a square of 2 square minus 2 square, so this is 0. So the distance from here to here is 0, and the distance from here to here is 0. And the distance from here to here is what? Well, you count 1, 2, 3, 4. So you see, it's a very weird thing, because as you move in this direction, it counts for, you know, is zero this distance, and this other one is there. So you you have to get used to this structure, and uh, the best way is usually to draw a space-time diagram. Did you understand this? Because I messed it up a little bit. You did not understand it. Well, just count. Uh, you see, you start counting the square. So the distance from here to here is one, two, three, four, five. Right. 
the distance here is 3. Then you compute the third distance by using the Pythagoras theorem, but remember it that you have to put the minus because of the metric. So then you, you get 5 squared minus 3 squared is whatever it is. Here you do the same. Now you want to measure this, so you take these two square plus these two square, but this plus two square has minus two square because they are in the t direction. So this is zero. In this metric, in this space, this distance, even though it looks different from zero, is effectively zero because of the metric. This is all the, all the secret that you have to learn about the Minkowski space-time. So let's draw this uh, famous space-time diagrams after having said this. You see, you can draw, so in two dimensions, it's still the, the blackboard, okay? So here you have CT, and here you have one direction. The others are sort of, uh, uh, they go for the ride because I fix them. And you can, let, let's take C equal to 1, okay? So that in unity with C is equal to 1. You can draw two lines like this. And we learn that the distances along these lines are a zero, right? Because there are distances in this direction. OK, and so you see you have, uh, so on this line, distances are equal to zero. So ds squared, the distance measured there, is effectively equal to zero. Inside this uh, triangle that is really, if I bring back x and y, they are cones, right, like this you have ds squared is, is, is greater than 0. And in, in between this and this, so here, ds squared is less than 0. OK? So space-time, Minkowski space-time, is effectively divided in three regions, one in which the interval are uh, uh, ds squared is greater than 0. So this is a, a, it's called a, uh so now I'm stuck again. Uh, ds squared, yeah. So this is, uh, uh, so if you are here and you start moving, you see you have that, uh, uh, you can only, so, so you can only move inside this cone or this, uh, this line because it, to move here, you must move at the speed of light, right? Because c equal to 1, so if you start moving at the speed of light, you move along this line. So this line is called the, uh, the, the light cone, right, that defines, and it separates effectively regions that are connected through uh, uh, intervals that are uh, uh, traveled by an observer. So if you start moving, you move slower than the speed of light, so you move inside here and you reach maybe this point in space time. Points that are up, so if you are here, you can never communicate, right, because the faster that you can communicate is the speed of light, so you can reach. As time goes by, you reach all these points, but you never reach one that is here. You reach the observer here when this goes up, and it reaches here, maybe, if you communicate with light. So this is a completely disconnected section of, of space-time. And uh, so this is your future, if you start out here. And clearly, this other cone is your past. And everything that is here uh, is, is the present. But you see, you cannot communicate with everywhere in, in, in space because of the fact that you can only communicate using light, and light moves with the finite speed that is equal to c, that is equal to 1 here. OK? You see, this is the equation is exactly the same, uh, the front, uh, uh, the, the equation of the, of the wave, right? So this is the light propagating, this is the future, and that is the path. Uh, so 
So what else? Uh, have you seen that before, or is that the first time you see this? Uh, so this is a, is a Minkowski space time. So as we computed before, I mean, the distance in Minkowski space between two light points, I mean, points on the light cone is just zero. These are, are, are uh, is the characteristic, OK? So in fact, uh, you see, there is no way that uh, you can communicate. So this is, is the original, you know, if you have a fixed clock with you, these are different times. And you see, I mean, at the same time, uh, two observers that are here and here, they cannot know of each other because they are at the same time, but there is no way that they can communicate because if this one is communicating with that one, is sending out a, a light signal, and it will reach this guy only here, right, as it moves in time. So this is useful because you have to, when you discuss uh, uh, physical problems, uh, you should discuss them in this space, okay? Like before, you discuss them in, uh, in space uh, by using the, uh, the, the Cartesian coordinate. Here you use this Cartesian coordinate, except that you have this Minkowski matrix in which you have a, this minus sign that, of course, changes everything in this form, okay? So what happened when, when, when you take two observers? Uh, you take two observers. So the first thing you notice is that uh, uh, because of these Lorentz transformations, uh, as I said, uh, uh, time uh, is not the same for observers moving uh, uh, at different speed with respect to each other. In fact, if you look at the formula of the boost, you see that uh, if you are looking at, uh, at the clock in another, uh, if somebody with a wristwatch is walking past you with a certain speed, uh, you will observe that the two times click at different rates, right? So how is that this, uh, and it's completely reciprocal. That is, uh, if, you, if I'm looking at your clock and your clock is speeding up uh, with respect to my, or, uh, and you look at my, you will see the same effect, right? That you see that my is uh, actually running faster than, than yours. Or, uh, as they said, uh, they usually uh, talk about this uh, paradox of the of the twins, I guess. The twins. So you take two twins, right? How does it work? Uh, in fact, you have to draw this uh, uh, space-time diagram. Sort of. Okay, so how, how does it work? Uh, do you remember? Uh, you, you have, uh, so you have uh, uh, two twins, uh, and one remains on the Earth, so it just, move, it just stay in the same place. Uh, so this is time, c is equal to 1. And the other guy uh, is on the spaceship, moving very fast. We will see how fast uh, in a second. So I guess he goes and he goes very far away to some other star. And uh, and then he comes back, right? Now, because, uh, uh, so how, how does it look like uh, that uh, you have this fact that the time is running at different rates in the two uh, frame of references? So usually you, you, you say this guy is getting older. I mean, he goes very far away, so it takes, I don't know, 100 years, okay? But because uh, uh, of the Lorentz transformation, really 
times for the guy that is uh, boosted, that is moving fast, it, it goes much slower. So the clock here is clicking slower than the clock on the Earth. So this guy maybe uh, uh, it takes like 20 years to go from here to here. Meanwhile, on the Earth, 100 years have uh, elapsed, right? So this guy, the two twins, when they meet again, the, the guy who stay here is 100 years old. The other one's 20 years old. And the paradox is that, uh, what is the paradox? Huh? No, what is the problem with this? Huh? Yes, but what is the problem here? Right. I mean, as I said, I mean, we, we have these things that, uh, uh, okay, times is running slower here, but the same, you, you know, you can think of the spaceship remaining here and the planet moving, right? And it should be completely symmetric. In that case, is the guy on the spaceship that is seeing the other guy uh, uh, moving at the speed, very close to the speed of light. So it's the other guy who should remain young, right? This is the paradox. So how does it work? Do you want to think about it and we discuss it on uh, Monday or you want to give a try? <laughs> No, I rather not bring. Uh, let's assume that uh, this this guy jumps here. It's a very delta function, direct delta function things. I mean, you don't want to discuss gravity. This is Einstein's answer. But uh, so think about it. We, we, so this is the homework. And of course, uh, you have the equivalent problem. It's not, it's not trivial, I mean, the, the answer. I mean, it's not completely trivial. Uh, uh, OK, but, uh, so maybe you want to start with a similar problem in space, right? Because again, uh, because of the Lorentz transformations, right, uh, you also have these things that uh, if you start measuring uh, uh, something uh, that is moving with respect to you, uh, like time, you will see that uh, shorter, right? So also that is kind of strange. Uh, and so, for instance, say you are a, a, a pole vaulting, you know, this long, uh, or, or this one, and you start running. And let's assume that uh, you run. So this is the other sort of problem. So you, 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 you are running, and you are holding something that is, say, 10 meters long. At a certain point, there is a barn. OK, that is, I don't know, eight meters long with two doors. Uh, so the observer that is sitting here on the barn, so provided that you run fast enough, uh, I mean, with the speed close to the speed of light sufficiently, we'll see this uh, shorter, right? And assume that the, the speed is, is cho that short enough to be eight meters. So when you are inside, for in, an instant, the guy there closes both door. That seems to be okay, right? Because, uh, well, uh, this is 10 meters, but because it's moving, it's, it's, it's shorter. You close the doors, uh, and it, then it's open, and you pass through. Now, you understand that uh, from your point of view, this is very strange because you are running. Now, for you, this is 10 meters because there is no contraction. But the barn is even shorter because, I don't know, it's 6 meters. <laughs> so the guy closed the doors and, you know, how, how can that be? You see, it, it always has to do with the fact that the physics should be the same, right? I mean, the, either the, these things get through or not, or it doesn't. But it looks like it cannot. So, OK, I want you to think also of this one. So this is homework two. So this is the twins. Uh, so this is the twin paradox, or twins paradox. But it's not a paradox. I mean, before paradox means that there is a real contradiction. 
And this is the, 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 the ladder and barn or the pole vaulting or whatever you want to call it. Yes? The two? Two clocks. Yeah, two clocks. So um, one is in, uh, in, in motion, I think, yes, in motion. Why one is in motion? Yeah. So one should be... Uh, no, but it's not... I mean, they, they, from the point of view of spatial relativity, they are, they are both moving, if you want. I mean, yeah, but because... The two, the two, the two are in, in, in motion. So how you can... Uh, no, but I mean... No, I don't understand. I mean, one, f for the guy on the earth, the clock on the, on the ship, on, on, the, on the spaceship is moving, but for the guy, I mean, on the spaceship, he, he may say it's the earth that is moving, right? I mean, it's still true that uh, physics is the same in all frames of references moving with constant speed. So it's all, that's why it's called relativity. I mean, because, okay, what you tell me. No, the, the point is exactly this, that uh, the, the guy here sees, sees a, a, a retardation in time, but the same should be true for the other guy. But clearly it's, it's not, because at the, it's like here. This, this, this guy sees this shrinking, but this guy is seeing the barn shrinking. And, but at the end of the day, he should, uh, I mean, the, the result is the same. That this guy comes, is older than this. This is an experimental fact. I mean, if you, if you have muons coming into the atmospheres, right, you know that they live longer than, uh, you know, the, a muon decays, I don't know, in a, in a fraction of a second. But we find muons much uh, at a lower altitude than uh, they should have decay. But because they move very fast, they decay uh, uh, much, uh, for us, uh, slower than for, for them. So this is a fact. We, we have the twins. And this, too, is, is a fact, even though I mean, we don't have uh, uh, people running that fast. So I just want you to think. I mean, people, this, this they, they, they throw immediately. I mean, Einstein explain that uh, it's a gravitational fact because uh, here you have a tremendous acceleration. So this is, this is okay, it's a possible solution. But uh, there is also a solution that, uh, in which, uh, say, the, the guy here simply throw the clock to another guy coming in the other direction. And this ap happening in a delta, okay? So let's assume this, just for the fun. Uh, it, it can be explained. But okay, I... I, I so we, we, we will discuss this on Monday. We, we, we play around with this uh, relativity stuff. Uh, Do, do you have questions? Uh, uh, okay, so that's... Uh, So these Lorentz transformations, they, so they came about, uh, remember, just uh, maybe this is the, the main point to remember. So we require the, the, the wave equations to, to, to be preserved, right? So that means that uh, first uh, we want the physics, exactly as in Galilean physics, the same, the, the, the invariant in form of our equations, uh, uh, independently of whether you are uh, moving with the const constant speed with respect to one observer and the other. But the other thing, because we want the, the wave equations to remain invariant, 
we have that the velocity of propagation of that wave, that is light, must be the same in all of this frame of reference. So it's a little bit, uh, you know, this, these two requirements that produce the Lorentz uh, uh, Lawrence, uh, 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 transformations uh, are a little bit, uh, uh, I think this second one is uh, it's harder to, 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 to digest, right? Because uh, in, uh, we have the idea that if you are moving, you know, the car moving, moves, then you turn on the headlights uh, so what is the speed of the, the light from the headlights? Should be C plus the speed of the car, but that's not the case, right? Because it's a, it's a wave. As I said before, I mean, if, you, if I'm talking and I'm moving, uh, uh, the, the speed of sound is the, the speed of sound in that medium. It's not, it does not depend on the, on the motion of, of the radiating uh, source. So from this point of view, it's obvious that the speed of light is the same in all frames, right? That's the beauty of Einstein's idea. Uh, on the other, uh, it goes against our general idea that instead light is not, I mean, it may be a particle or something in which you sum the, the speeds, okay? So that's what uh, has to be digested. And of course, the problem, as I said uh, maybe uh, earlier, is that uh, this idea that the speed of a wave does not depend on the on the on the velocity of uh, of uh, of the source. Uh, it's, it's 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 physically clear if you have a medium, right? Because you excite the medium, and uh, that's the wave. But here we don't have this medium because uh, we only have these two vectors in empty space E and B, and therefore uh, it's a bit harder to understand. Okay, but that's what uh, it is. I mean, this has been verified many, many times that, uh, that uh, you have to use Lorentz transformations to go from uh, one frame to the other. So there is little, little doubt that this is correct. Uh, I think uh, 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 it's, uh, uh, so, so for, for our discussion on Monday, it's also useful to write the, um, you see, you can write in a nice form the, this Lorentz transformations if you, use, if you introduce a sort of, uh, 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 so let's take again the, the Lorentz boost, but let's introduce a, an angle. So I introduce a, the tang, this is the, the ratio of the cinch over the, the hyperbolic stuff. So I call beta, this, uh, uh, this V over C, uh, I identify with this angle. Okay, so you see that uh, because of the property of this, uh, so maybe, it, it, let, let me, it, it's easier to call the, the tangent. So you remember that the, the hyperbolic tangent, uh, uh, right, is, is like the sinh divided by the cosinh, right? And the cosinh square minus the sinh square is equal to one. Now you understand why, I mean, why I did not use the, the tangent, because, uh, because of this uh, freaky minus sign in the time component, I need something that looks li like this minus that rather than plus. So you have to use hyperbolic function. Now you see that uh, uh, if, I, if now identify, if you identify the tangent, uh, uh, the hyperbolic tangent with beta, then the cinch is V over C divide by one minus V square, C square. And the, 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 the cosinh uh, is the one, one minus V square, C square, right? By, by using this decomposition. So if you remember the, the boost I wrote before, now I can write the boost, the generic boost for the T component that not by now I, I can call X naught is going to be, remember, <coughs> it was like this, so it was the, the, co the, the hyperbolic, uh, uh, the hyperbolic cosine uh, of this angle theta that is related to, to the boost parameter beta, the uh, theta of x naught minus the sinh theta of x1. I'm still boosting only in one direction, okay? 
And uh, so this is time, and the, and the, and the, and the x direction, uh, you see, is minus the sinh of theta uh, x naught uh, plus the cos, cos sinh theta of x1. And the others are, are the same, right? Uh, y and z, uh, so. Do, do you see that? Or? Yes, no, I mean, no. So I, you see, uh, if I define the, the, this, uh, this angle in such a way that the hyperbolical tangent is equal to beta, then if you use this property, right, you see that uh, the, so here I, I forgot, that the, the hyperbolical sine must be V over C divided by this, and the cosine is equal to this, right? This is just uh, mathematics. But you see, these two are the factor that were in the, in, the, in, the, in the boost that I wrote uh, one hour ago, right? You see, because well, that was the boost. So I can take this. This was the boost. If you put the, this was the, this factor gamma, right? And then that was uh, the other combination. So you see, you can write the boost by using this uh, uh, hyperbolic transformation in a way. But that's kind of nice because you see, this is like a, a rotation. So now a Lorentz transformation is a rotation in space time. But what kind of rotation? It's not the usual rotation because you see I don't have the, the sine and the cosine. I have the hyperbo hyperbolic sine and hyperbolic cosine. So it's a little bit different. That is, if you start with your first system with coordinate x1 and x0, and you do a boost, it is a rotation, but it's not the rotation that we are used to in which this rotates like this. It's a rotation in which they come closer. So this, this goes to a new set of coordinate system by this angle theta. This is a very, so it, it's a very nice uh, representation of what is going on. In fact, uh, uh, it may help you to discuss this, those two, the twins and the, the, the ladder and barn paradoxes if you map the problem in these coordinates. Because in these coordinates, you see it's just a rotation. So you start out, uh, uh, you see, and then when you measure things, here in this frame, you measure things by drawing this line, right? One, two, three, and one, two, three. But here you should do the same, but you see the lines are like this. So the same object that is, was long like this here becomes something like this in the other frame. So by using this rotation, well, rotations uh, like this, uh, uh, you can, for instance, this fact that the two events are, uh, uh, let, let's, let's do this. I start with this uh, uh, x1 and, and x0, right? And then uh, I have this boost, x1 uh, uh, prime and x0 prime. Huh? So you see that uh, uh, if you have two, for instance, uh, now you go to a line here, and you take two two events, A and B. Right? You see, this line ends exactly at the same point in, in time for this set of coordinates. For, for this observer, A and B are simultaneous. You see, they, these two events happen exactly at the same instant because you, 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 how, how do you draw a simultaneity line? You draw pa parallel to the x direction, right? So a, b are exactly at the same time x naught prime. But you see that if you draw the simultaneity line in the other space, then you have to draw lines parallel to the x1 coordinate, so they are like this. 
So you see they happen at 2 uh, C delta T, at two different instants in time. So this is, is very useful because it visualizes this fact that uh, two events that are, ha they happen at exactly at the same time in this frame, moving with a certain speed with respect to the other, they will look separate by the interval of time. So not simultaneous at all in the other frame of reference. And this is the, 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 the most important information that things that happen at the same time in a frame of references, they happen at different time in another one. So there is not a single time in the whole universe for all observers. What is, what is time depends on uh, the frame of reference in which you happen to, to be living. Okay? So that's a useful thing, I think, uh, to, to think in uh, uh, this boost as rotations, but they are rotation in which, uh, rotations in which you don't rotate the axis like this, but you, you, you pull them close. So they are rotations defined by the hyperbolic functions rather than the trigonometric uh, functions. So for instance, now you can start thinking about the, the barn and ladder because you see when, when the two doors are closed, Right, the guy there say, uh, when, when the ladder is inside, I close the two doors. So the, he thinks he's closing the two doors at the same time. Huh? But this same time is not the same time for the, for, the, for the guy who's running. So there the explanation has to do with the fact that actually for the guy running, first one door is closed and then the other one is closed. Not at the same time. That allows for the much longer pole to get through. So. So this is what really happens. We live in a Minkowski space. We don't live in a Cartesian. That's an experimental fact. I mean, this is what really is what really is happening. That if you check clocks and you are moving, our clocks do not move at the same time. So what is simultaneous for you is not for me. I mean, that's uh, that's how the work. I mean, the world is is like this. It's like it's quantum and relativistic. It's weird, but that's the way it is. You, 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 you seem skeptical. No, I mean, it, clearly your everyday experience, uh, it, it goes against that, but that, that just because you move so slowly. If you, you know, if we were all, uh, uh, there is a nice book uh, by Gamow, uh, maybe you have read that, uh, The Mr. Tompkins or something, where, you see, to understand relativity, you really should think that the C is not, what is it, uh, 1, 10 to the 9 uh, uh, centimeter per second, maybe. Yeah. Okay. But think that uh, it's like 10 kilometer per, per hour. Assume that the speed of light is the speed of a, of a, of, of a of a bicycle. No. Now all these effects will be part of our everyday life. So as I walk you, this direction, you see me, you know, uh, uh, much much thinner in these directions, right? Because I have a Lorentz contraction, right? The same, and, and our clocks are completely, you know, because I move a little bit, my clock is completely different from your. We would never agree on on when uh, when to have class. <laughs> unless we all move it. So uh, that's the way it is for particles, right? They move very close to the speed of light. And as I said, the muons, uh, you know, they decay much later than they should because they move re with respect to us. Uh, they live in a frame moving with the speed very close to the speed of light. So these are real effects. And uh, 
Of course, Lorentz thought that the Lorentz contraction was uh, a physical effect in the same frames, right? I mean, Lorentz wrote the Lorentz transformation before Einstein. But he thought that uh, this uh, fact of, uh, of uh, that if you see something moving past you, you will see it shorter than the, the guy. He thought that that was a physical effect, that uh, if I run and I see, as well as you see, uh, this, uh, this, this uh, I don't know how it's called, this, uh, this pointer shorter. Because the idea was that to solve this question with the, with the, with the, uh, with the boost, uh, uh, really the atoms were getting squeezed because they were moving very fast. So they were got, you know, like with the, your hair like this. So they really thought that if you run, uh, but this is not what happens, right? This, what, uh, this was Einstein's contribution. The, the guy running with his pole toward the barn sees the, 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 pole, vol, the pole exactly 10 meters. I mean, that's what it is. It's you who sits on top of the barn that measure my pole running that you see it shorter, and vice versa. So it's, a, it's a, a problem of you measuring something in another frame. That, uh, so there is no, how to say, the Lorentz contraction, as explained to us by, by Einstein, is not that the atoms get anything weird or stuck together closer. It's just you that are measuring something in a frame that is moving with respect to you that see that shorter, the same with time. Okay? So it, maybe that's a, it's not a physical effect on the things. It is a physical effect, but due to the fact that you are moving with respect to me. But that then leads to those paradoxes, because, because it's completely symmetric, then you have to explain things like the. But it's not a big deal. I mean, it's just a, a question of, of simultaneity or, or, or not. In fact, on the Wikipedia, I found two quite nice uh, articles on the twin paradox. And uh, so you are welcome to inspire yourself by reading them. And also on this uh, ladder paradox is called there. So the last thing I want to use this to show this fact that is maybe a paradox too, that uh, uh, because if we are moving with respect to each other with certain v, I see your stuff shorter, but you see my stuff shorter. So how that be can be? This is a very common objection to relativity. I mean, it, it makes no sense because I see your ladder shorter, but vice versa, you see if I'm running the same shorter. So how is that possible? Well, this is actually has to do with these diagrams. So let's look at this boost from the two frames and use the geometry of Minkowski to explain this uh, symmetry of the two, and then, and, and then we stop. So as I said, uh, uh, So it seems impossible, right? Because if I draw, so this is x1, and this is time. Uh, and then I have uh, the other frame that is moving, in which time is this. Uh, let's call it like this. And so the pro so say I have uh, some C, a length L here, right? This is, this is space, so a length L goes from here to here, right, at time t prime equal to 0. And uh, the contraction, Lorentz contraction, is the fact that when I, when, I, when I take this length, looks only like this, right? This is Lorentz contraction. That uh, the, the length measured in this frame, it, it's, uh, you see, looks shorter when measured in the other frame. So how is it possible that the same should be true if I measure this? I go back here, it should be shorter, but it's not, right? It's longer. But is it? Actually, it's not, because the problem here is that uh, uh, you have to measure these distances, right? So you need something invariant to report the unit of length. 
So I don't know if I'm if I can do this because it requires some some drawing. So let's uh, let, let's see. I start out. So this is x, and this this is time, right? This is x prime. So I start with the length e x equal to one here. Okay. The origin point A is x equal to one. Now you see the problem is that I have to, so this is the unit length. I have to report this unit length in the new boosted frame. How, how should I do that? To do that, I need something that, uh, that, uh, that is invariant. And the only thing that is invariant on the, this transformation is by definition the, uh, the, the, the x squared minus c squared t squared equal to, in this case, 1. So this is a hyperbole in this space, right? And this is invariant under the transformation. So this goes like this. This is half of the hyperbole. <coughs> okay. So you see this point A, that is 1, goes to this point, I call it, I don't know, A prime, that is x prime equal to 1. This is the 1. This is the one in this new set of coordinates, OK? So you see that uh, when I report this length 1 here, I go up straight. So I go to this point, OK? But you see, this is not 1. It's less than 1. Because 1 is not what uh, you would go straight up. You have to transform this 1 in an invariant manner. So you go up, say, through this hyperbole. OK, so you see, then, uh, then this one is shorter, because one was this, when I measure one in this unit, this is shorter, even though you know, it looks like it, it was. And the same if I go back, right? Because if I go back, this a prime, I have to report this parallel to, to, the, to the other axis, right? So this, this goes back here. You see, this, this goes up this way. This goes down this way. Because when you report lengths at fixed time, you have to move parallel to the time. So you see, this too goes in a point i prime that is shorter than the original. So both are shorter. So it's perfectly OK. And to understand it, you have to use this geometry. You should not use your, your mind because we know that it does not work because our mind developed you know, through evolution in a space that was not Minkowski. So you cannot pretend to understand. But you see, it works perfectly fine. So you see, it's completely safe. This is shorter than this, but also this is shorter than that because the invariance of the unit has to be reported through the hyperbole. hyperbole. So that too helps uh, with the with the with the ladder paradox. Okay, well now it's so uh, we, we we keep on. So uh, on Friday we we will move on with the space time and write the the, the Maxwell equations in this space. Yes. Well, just uh, Cartesian. Uh, yeah, I mean, if you if you have no, t, for d and, uh, yeah, but uh, yeah, but if time is not transformed in the boost, then uh, you don't have this effect. These effects come in because I well, I require this invariance. Then uh, I get this mixing between space and time, so I have the Lorentz boost. If I don't have the Lorentz boost, t is equal to t prime. So. I just have rotations, and for rotations, I don't have this. So, so uh, okay. I mean, if we have like Lorentz transformation, and can we have space in this? Ah, no, no, because uh, I mean, uh, the space that is invariant under Lorentz transformation is Minkowski, and Minkowski is made this way. Well, then the, yeah. Why would you write like x is 
No, I don't write I. I wrote uh, minus. I don't like this I. No, that's uh, that's uh, don't, don't write I. It, it's because then uh, you have rotations, but then uh, you see. Yeah, but you have one component that is imaginary, so I think uh, you pay a too high a price. Just stick with the real coordinates and the Minkowski space. I know that uh, the old way was to put an I, then uh, this uh, tang, hyperbolic because the tang, and then these are rotations. But then it's, much, it's even more complicated to understand all this stuff. No, believe me, but, but follow me. Don't. <laughs> uh, uh, so, uh, so. Uh, 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 mm. So the, the, we live in this Minkowski space, and uh, actually the space is even more complicated than Minkowski, as you know, because this is a flat space, but you know that if you want to bring in gravity, this Minkowski space becomes curved, so it's even more complicated. 